Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to welcome NASA Deputy Administrator Jim Moorhard and the crew of the International Space Station. As someone who wanted to be an astronaut as a child, I'm extremely excited to have you join us today. I continue to be in awe of the incredible work that you do, and I know I'm not alone. Everyone at NASDAQ is thrilled that you're able to join us here today virtually as we get set to ring today's opening bell. Now, there is a lot to celebrate, and I'd like to begin by congratulating all of you on Launch America, the first flight into orbit of American astronauts on American rockets from American soil since 2011. This past weekend, in partnership with SpaceX, NASA successfully launched Crew Dragon, the first ever commercial crew vehicle, with astronauts Robert Behnken and Douglas Hurley to the International Space Station. It is truly a pivotal moment in the development of the space economy and a new era of private human spaceflight. For nearly 20 years, humans have lived and worked aboard the International Space Station, operating and maintaining the station with resupply and crew rotations needed regularly. NASA's decision to partner with the commercial industry to provide these, these services enables economic growth in low Earth orbit and makes space more accessible than ever before. Congratulations again on this new endeavor. It is certainly an exciting time. NASDAQ is honored to celebrate Launch America with you. We look forward to seeing everything that NASA has in store with your Artemis program and sharing many more inspirational milestones in the months and years ahead. Now, please join me in welcoming Jim Warhard for further remarks. Thank you so much, Adina. Today, you know, we're celebrating a new era in space exploration. And we're really at the dawn of a new space age. You know, we're expanding the economy in low Earth orbit. It, there's a growing demand for research on the International Space Station. And NASA is working on things like mass producing retinal implants, creating live human tissue that can't be constructed in the gravity of Earth, uh, and developing better fiber optics uh, that will make it them better and easier to use. It used to be that NASA developed, built, launched, and operated spacecraft. Uh, and now we want the commercial industry to do just that in low Earth orbit. We really want to be one of many customers in the commercial marketplace. And as we get more customers and suppliers, we're driving down cost and really increasing innovation. That's what we're trying to do. To give you an idea, really, of how important this launch was and is, once we get a full complement of our astronauts up at the International Space Station, we're going to increase research and development by 300%. Ultimately, we really hope to have commercial space stations that this crewed transportation system will go to and deliver astronauts. Like you said, it's been nine years since we had a human-rated American space Space Center. With the leadership of President Trump and the Vice President, we're going forward to the moon in preparation to go to Mars. And to do so, we've got to start with regular human-rated spacecraft flights from the United States. And we also really need to test out on the International Space Station just how safe it is to be up there for long durations. It, it's, you know, SpaceX is doing this demonstration. It's really an end-to-end -end flight test to make sure all our systems are working. And that includes the launch, getting to orbit, docking. Now our astronauts are looking at how Crew Dragon and the International Space Station work together. And we'll be looking at the undocking and the re-entry and the splashdown, which will happen off on the in the Atlantic off of Florida. You, th you think about it, about it, a majority of Americans have never even seen a splashdown of a space capsule. This is really the first reusable capsule and the re first reusable rocket that has transported astronauts. And no co private company has ever done that before. It's really, to me, it's an unprecedented milestone. This is about turning over low Earth orbit to our commercial companies as we prepare to explore the moon and Mars. We've really entered into a transformational era. And with the leadership of the president, we're gonna transform space so it remains in our interest and the interest of all, all free nations. 
We do it not because no one else can. We do it really to advance the human condition of all people. And yes, we, we've got struggles on earth here, but we're going to get through this time in our history. And our hope is that we're going to inspire the next generation to do stunning achievements. It's how we move forward as a species. But also we hope to instill hope for those who need it and again, unite the nation and the world. Now, we're happy to join NASDAQ today for your opening bell. And we're joined with Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, who just did that amazing launch and then rode that Dragon capsule up to the station. And Chris Cassidy's with us too, and he's the current commander of the International Space Station. So Dina, I think you've got a few questions for the crew and I'm gonna leave it to you right here. Great, thank you very much, Jim. All right, well, I am. I just can't believe I get to interview um, our astronauts today, but uh, Robert and Douglas, you are the first people to fly Crew Dragon. The idea is that spaceships like this will enable people to become private astronauts to make space flight more common. What are your thoughts about making space flight more common and accessible to private citizens and the role that you are playing in that development? Well, it's great to talk to you today. Um, we think that uh, the more people that get to fly to space, the better off we'll be as a species and the better off the individuals will be going forward. It's really transformational when you uh, come into space and you look back at our planet and, and see how fragile it is and how thin the atmosphere is. Uh, it, it really does change you for the better. And I think the more people that we expose to this, uh, the better off we'll be as a species. That is truly inspirational, so thank you. Well, Chris, as the commander of the International Space Station, this is the second time you've lived on the space station. So what makes the space station such a special place for you? Well, uh, on a technical re uh, answer, there's so many things that, that are, are, are a marvel to me that we are able to conduct, keep an atmosphere going, keep the people safe, keep the equipment running and safe, and conduct all this amazing research. But more on a, on a philosophical level, I think it's the international cooperation and the partnership that has been forged over these 20 years uh, that re really I find so impressive and, and very analogous to the partnership we now have with the commercial partners uh, as demonstrated uh, just the other day. So uh, quite an impressive place to live and be. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. And what's amazing is that you're, it's like we're talking to you as if you're on earth, but yet you are so far above us. So it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful pleasure and honor to have a chance to speak with you today. I think we're gonna get ready to ring today's opening bell.
All right. We got um, we got the opening bell there. We are going to hand it over to Morgan Brennan uh, for a couple of very special guests. Morning, Morgan. Good morning, Carl, and thank you. We're going to turn now to the International Space Station. Station, this is CNBC. How do you hear me? The International Space Station has you loud and clear. Great. Well, thank you for joining us this morning on the heels of ringing that NASDAQ opening bell. Historic weekend as Bob and Doug, you became the first astronaut to launch from American soil in nine years, first to make this journey via both a commercial rocket and a commercial spacecraft. Got to start right there. How was the ride, especially given the fact that you have the space shuttle to compare it to? Well, hello, Morgan. Uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Our experience on board uh, Dragon was just really exciting for us. Uh, both uh, the fueling event before we lifted off, it was uh, different than the space shuttle, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more exciting for us, uh, probably a little bit, just a little bit at least, because it was the first time anyone had done that. Uh, we then launched into into space on board the Falcon 9, and uh, the ride, I'll say, was a little bit smoother than our shuttle experience. The shuttle was a little bit rougher, at least at the beginning. Uh, later in the flight, uh, it did uh, wake us up a little bit, though, as we uh, continued all the way into low Earth orbit. Just uh, really exciting for both of us. Uh, I know we were smiling and talking through the th entire uh, way uphill, so it was uh, just a lot of fun for us. That's great. And just for our viewers, given the fact we do have a little bit of a delay, keep in mind this is a live interview. It's taking place with the International Space Station, which is 250 miles above Earth. Expedition, Expedition 63 ISS Commander Chris Cassidy, Flight Engineers Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley are with us this morning. Guys, major moment in history. What does this mean for each of you? Well, I think for me personally, it's uh, it's a great way to uh, fly your third time in space uh, after nine-year wait uh, to fly previously uh, on the last shuttle flight. So this is a good way to kind of bookend it uh, from a career standpoint and uh, to fly with two close friends and uh, get to spend some time on the space station is just a, uh, it's a real icing on the cake for me. Great. Bob and Doug, you worked closely with SpaceX on design and development of Crew Dragon. You named it Endeavor on this trip as well. What was the process of that design and development like, and how involved was Elon Musk? Well, for both Doug and I, we did spend quite a bit of time working directly with the team out in Hawthorne. Uh, we've, of course, visited uh, most of SpaceX's facilities around the country at uh, McGregor, Texas, and then down at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, our experience was was pretty uh, extensive. We were able to get to all the facilities, interface with all the different aspects of the vehicle. I think Doug and I went something like uh, 32 consecutive weeks with uh, travel out to California to work directly with that team face to face. Uh, it really just does help to be able to see each other. Uh, managing that through the pandemic that we faced was a bit of a challenge, but one that we overcame and the SpaceX team did a wonderful job with uh, facilitating that, providing a, a clean environment and, and ensuring that we didn't get exposed to anything that might uh, potentially impact hardware production or, of course, a, a launch delay. I do know that uh, Elon was uh, involved in quite a bit of the uh, development uh, process. I know that many of the topics that we would discuss would then be percolated up through the organization, and he would give the uh, final approval on, on many of the aspects of things that uh, we, were, we were trying to get developed. And so uh, definitely a huge team that uh, pulled together, and, and SpaceX just did a wonderful job with uh, allowing us to be a part of that innovative process. And Chris, I'll put this question to you as we usher in this new era of human spaceflight. How close are we really to this commercialized space reality or the so-called colonization of space? How do you see it? 
Well, I, I see that the, this, uh, the, the space station eventually will, will no longer be operated by the government. I, I, I'm not enti entirely privy to all the details, but there, there are plans for after uh, the government is done with the space station, perhaps we turn that over to operating from a commercial entity or add additional modules that commercial entities uh, provide. And, and we are really close. Technically, that's not a leap far at all. It's just a matter of getting the will, getting the um, the demand, and, uh, and and we can make it happen. And, and that's super exciting because there's so much capability that's offered here on the space station. But ultimately, uh, our destination as, as space travelers is Mars with a stop at the moon. And, uh, and the International Space Station gives us that core, that bedrock of knowledge that we have to really fine tune all of the technical things we need to do to accomplish those two larger uh, long-term goals. Whether it's Virgin Galactic or Blue Origin or even the prospective sale of seats on SpaceX's Crew Dragon, what do you think of all the space tourism efforts that are underway? Do you think non-professionals are going to be able to handle G-Force and some of the other things that are associated with going to and from space? Well, each one of us experienced it for the first time, just like uh, hopefully a lot of other people will get to do uh, going forward as we privatize the uh, low Earth orbit and suborbital industries. I, I think it's just very much based on the individual and, you know, with the proper instruction and training, those folks will at least understand what they're going to go through, whether it's a suborbital flight or an actual trip to the International Space Station or low Earth orbit. Uh, I think managing folks' expectations as they do that is, a, is an important part of the training. And then, obviously, there's the physical aspects. But I think most people should be able to, to physically tolerate any of those flights. And once again, as I said before, just take in what is uh, just an incredible planet that we uh, live on. And finally, uh, given the fact that you do quite literally have this unique view of the world right now uh, orbiting above it, what is the perspective or the insights that you would want to share with those of us that are, quite frankly, in what's been a difficult 2020, navigating quite a number of societal challenges back here on Earth? Well, I, I will tell you that the pandemic challenge, for example, should give uh, the entire country and the entire world an appreciation for really what it's like to be an astronaut preparing to launch into space. Uh, the quarantine level, the preparation to ensure that you don't bring anything you don't want all the way into orbit and infect or uh, pass it on to the, your crewmates is something that uh, we've done for years as astronauts. And if you look back in our history of our space program, there was a time when the astronauts returning from the moon uh, went into a, a lockdown and a quarantine behind the glass to just make sure that nothing came back with them that we didn't want to have back on Earth. And so I think that what's called the overview effect that astronauts uh, uh, typically achieve when they uh, accomplish their first space flight and look back at the earth and realize that you know there are no boundaries or borders uh, really observable from space for the most part you see that it's a single planet with a shared atmosphere it's our shared place uh, in, in this universe and so i think that perspective as we go through things like the the pandemic or we see the challenges across our nation or across the world and recognize that we all face them together uh, hopefully, a little bit of the astronaut experience and a little bit of that perspective is uh, uh, being shared by the rest of the world right now. We're able to get through it on the International Space Station uh, through cooperation with our international partners, with our commercial partners, of course. And hopefully, we can be an inspiration and an example for what we'd like to see happen uh, across the world. I think I speak for many people when I say you are inspiring us right now. Thank you so much for your service and your bravery. May you all have safe journeys back to Earth when that time does come. Bob Benkin, Doug Hurley, Chris Cassidy joining us exclu exclusively from 250 miles above Earth at the International Space Station. Thank you so much.
Station, this is Houston HCR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. Thank you to all participants from NASDAQ and CNBC. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.